Today, let's talk about how most of us consume content. So, I kind of recorded this back in December 30th, um, 2023. It's a time that is ripe for making New Year's resolutions that will perhaps turn rotten in a couple weeks. TBD. I'm not terrible at habit building, but I'll be interested to see if my resolutions have any staying power. So for 2024, I want to write more. Just do more in general, publicly. What struck me about 99% of us is uh, we consume content. Movies, TV shows, music, books, articles, TikTok. YouTube, Instagram Reels, LinkedIn, they are made by the 1%. So much of human culture, memes, and content created by a small fraction of us. Humans are naturally lazy, and the inclination to do nothing after work and get constant dopamine hits is quite significant. Everyone knows the major social media companies have figured out how to make you doom scroll for hours. Why? To be able to secure your attention is to be able to secure revenue. And in a capitalist society, we all know money is kink. So, how does it work? Advertising and product placements. Influencers, they make a living purely on the ability to secure your eyeballs and attention. This applies to both B2B and B2C products. And I'm still absolutely shocked at how insanely effective this is. What is also apparent is that content creation and an audience is increasingly becoming more accessible. 50 years ago, TV and newspaper had an absolute monopoly on news. That is the only source you could consume and trust. If you wanted to advertise to a broad audience, you had no choice but to work with ads men like those portrayed on the TV series Mad Men. Now, anyone with an internet connection can access 5.3 billion humans, approximately 66% of the human population, according to Statista. 5.3 billion pairs of eyeballs. That's, that's quite a lot, isn't it? And because of that global reach, what's incredible is that people are getting more creative in terms of the audience they want to capture, right? And at the end of the day, I think it boils down to human emotion and desire. What's incredible about timeless content creation is that it's a product you produce only once. Only once. And it's out there forever. You never know when your content will be cross-referenced in another blog post as supporting evidence or remix into a meme. It's a built-in virus that can explode again and again. That's dollar signs, exposure for your personal brand, spiteful comments, and everything in between, probably. What's also interesting is that content tends to follow human emotion and desire. And if you want a pro tip on how to get rich, you really just need to follow the deadly sins to make money. Here's a primer from ChatGPT. Number one, less. Define as an intense desire or need for a sexual gratification, but it can also extend to a desire for power or other forms of pleasure. Number two, gluttony. Excessive ongoing consumption of food or drink. Number three, greed. An excessive pursuit of material possession or wealth. Number four, sloth. An avoidance of physical or spiritual work, often associated with laziness or procrastination. Number five, wrath. Extreme and controlled feelings of anger and hatred, often leading to violence. Number six, envy. A jealous desire for the traits, status, and abilities, or maybe a situation of someone else. You really want that, don't you? Number seven, 
pride, an inflated sense of personal status or accomplishment often deem as the most serious of the sins. Interesting. It's interesting that pride is considered most serious because it's effectively ignorance uh, and a lack of self-awareness. And I guess that's what people tend to uh, hate the most, don't they? Anyway, there is clearly a market for every emotion out there. And if you think about it, the stronger the emotion, the more visceral the response and attention. And if you have been following, attention equals eyeballs, equals ads, equals revenue. It's no wonder clickbait, sensationalized headlines, and gossip, negative news, all of this shit dominates the headlines, man. Nobody's interested if American Express flight AA5021, who has flown a thousand flights without incident, and landed safely yet again. Right? Just that simple. So, let's talk a bit about Modelo. Because when I first moved to the States many years ago, I've never heard of Modelo beer. And frankly had zero interest in consuming or drinking it. And I will also mention that I'm a pretty tough cookie when it comes to advertising. The average advertiser will have to advertise to my face probably a hundred times before I even consider it. Because I am pretty stubborn that way. Uh -huh. Well, I'm happy to report that after five years of Modelo, which is a beer, by the way, for those of you not in the know, constantly advertising to my face. My recent trip to Mexico City, which is amazing, um, and also the fact that they broadcast on national NFL, MLB, NBA games, I have started to occasionally drink Modelo beers at bars. So, yes, holy shit, it actually worked. How do we feel about that? I don't know. That is a good, good question. Very good question, actually. All right. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, yeah, YouTube likes long-form content, too. So, I think it might be a good idea for me to do a bit of a clickbait. Unfortunately, I am not too creative when it comes to clickbait. Still need to build that skill set out. Anyway, a uh, couple other things. Let's see. Um, viral marketing and growth, right? How do you get viral? Um, and I think... When someone starts a business, you often hear the anecdote that if you're starting it for the first time, you care about how good the product you build is, which is quite true. But if you're starting a business for the second time, what you really care about is distribution, like how you're going to get access, get in front of people who are going to buy your product or a service, attention, course, whatever. And the more I think about my personal experiences and amateur YouTube, experiences um it's quite true getting someone to part with their hard-earned cash is really really fucking tough man when you start to consider something brand new i think you really need to solicit feedback and it is not an easy thing to get when everyone is so slammed with ads attention things that their eyeballs and all that good stuff so unless you are the next alcoholic beverage of the year or chat gpt you probably have to grind for some kind of feedback from your customers and i think that's kind of the tough part about entrepreneurship right? it sounds sexy but the grind is really tough and it can get really long. And how many times can you grind and rise and grind before you um, get fucking tired of all this shit? I think there's only a few times people can really do the zero to one motion. And you better make sure that you save one for yourself, maybe two, um, for your own business. Because if you don't, 
you won't have the energy in later years to actually do it. That kind of sucks. But, um, yeah, those are my thoughts. And, um, let's see. What else that would be interesting? Oh, right. I'll, I'll leave you with one last fun fact. And a fun fact is more on the advertising ecosystem. And one thing I realize is there are so many players in advertising. Is There's so many different channels to advertise. You can advertise for sports. You can do advertising for kids. You can advertise for pharmaceuticals here in the U.S. It's kind of nuts in my opinion. Um, there's all kinds of products you can sell. And there's a lot of people who make it their day job to make sure that you sell that effectively or at least burn a lot of cash while you're trying to sell it. So, what am I trying to say here? It's a great, great capitalistic invention and it permeates every aspect of our lives, especially your smartphones, your smart TV. Oh, definitely your smart TV. It's spying on you. Um, Obviously, Google and Apple have rolled out some privacy changes on tracking and cookies, and that's that's kind of a big thing in this industry where they uh, their whole business is tracking you across devices, across space, across time. Um, millions of jobs in advertising hinge on being able to blast your eyeballs from cradle to grave, and owning the platform is key with Apple, Amazon, and all the fucking tech companies being super successful billion dollar standalone ad businesses to a captive audience. Amazon can just mint data and build Amazon basic products and put it first because they trust first party products over a third party product. And if you are a third party, you're kind of fuck. You know, if Amazon basic comes in, Undercuts you, undercuts you by uh, 30%, you're kind of fucked, man. You better find a new product category. Your sales are about to go on a long as downward trajectory with no end in sight. And yeah, you know, it's a race to the bottom. That's not a position you want to be in. Trust me. So, anyway, it's kind of a rambly thing, but as you can tell, I, uh, I do enjoy talking about random shit and if you like random shit or you just kind of want random vibes on a Friday I think I do plan to maintain this discipline at the very least of uploading on Fridays we'll see how well I do but if I do you'll see me next Friday and if you like this like and subscribe and uh, peace out